Yeah, I'm going to you to do some invites. So I knew I was coming back, but I'm going to do these invites anyway. I wish they had an invite all button. You just invite your whole friends list or everybody in your that you communicate with in the um, chat. And you just invite everybody at one time. And like, invite all. That's what we ought to start right, uh, messaging to uh, to uh, Instagram, to Meta World. Um, okay. We back in here once again, chiefing with the chief, sponsored by Black Girl Magic, part three, on the late night creep. What it do, peeps? What it do, peeps? What it do, peeps? So, I'm um, going to start with the brother, and then we're going to get on in here and see what he talking about. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Supreme peace, Rod. Supreme peace. Supreme peace, God. What you know good? Tell the people where you, ch- where you chiming oh, in from. Oh, man. Hold on. Hold on. I got something for you. First, I got tell, this. Tell them, where, tell them where you chiming in from, guys, so they know. Jacksonville, the finish line. That's right. Florida in the house. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Um, the first one is about life, about going through the test, about the trauma. Trauma, it means wound. And the only way you can heal a wound is you got to give it air (coughs) and let it breathe. That's the best way. A wound will heal properly. (coughs) Yes, sir. Yeah. Now, let me take a sip of this water for this one. All right. About Jacksonville. Jacksonville, first name was Cal Ford. Spell. Then they. Huh? Spell. See. C O W F O R D. That's that good game. Oh, yes, sir. Oh, Rod. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's take a breath. Take a breath. Thank <laughs> you. They be sending me all kind of remedies for, for, for the cough, right? Mm hmm. I said, the only remedy for a chronic cough is not to smoke the chronic. So, therefore, there is no remedy for the cough I got. Oh, yeah, yeah, you're right. <laughs> Ooh, that's a chronic. I know what you're talking about. <laughs> that bright green is bright green. Yes, sir. <coughs> that's that's how I was. But um, the first name was Cal Ford. Then they switched it to Pablo Beach. Pueblo. Pueblo, yeah. Yeah. They switched Pueblo. it to that. The, now um, remember, the Pueblo Indians left. They whole village left. All yeah, of a sudden, I'm, they changed the name from Calford to Pueblo. Yeah. Hmm. And then I wondered switched. if anything is connecting here. Wait, wait, all oh, right. The funny part about it, they came and put this monument this monument, um, this Confederate monument in Hemming Plaza, they came and set that there. So, look, <laughs> look hear me out, Aunt Rod. Mm-hmm. Hear me out. I say the 62-foot um, Vermont granite monument, which is topped with a bronze statue of a Confederate soldier in a winter uniform, um, was installed in Hemming um, Park in 1898 after the park's namesake Civil War veteran Charles C. Hemming donated the statue. And hold on, Rod, Uncle Rod. Um, mm-hmm. Three years later, it caught fire. 
and they said that statue, the bottom of it was glowing red. <coughs> That's a hot ass fire. Look, how hot a fire got to be for metal to be uh, glowing red? Yeah, the the statue was on um, just taken from here in twenty twenty. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the crazy part about it. And uh, hold on, Aunt Rod, another thing: the the great hold on the great fire could be seen in Savannah, Georgia. That I was talking about when they set the Florida on fire. So they tried to burn Florida. They were trying to burn us out of the thicket. Yeah, and, and, a, and a funny part about that, um, the Great Fire of 1901 was the most destructive event in Jacksonville history. Wiped out 236, I mean, 2,368 buildings while leaving nearly 10,000 people homeless. But I'm going to say 100,000. Because they ain't going to never give you the full right numbers. Exactly. Remember Rosewood? Yeah. Rosewood Rose. was a gullah stronghold. It was That was a military action when they burned Rosewood down. They was trying to get us out of that village because we... We was... We, we, we ain't pussy as they Martin Luther King think. Right. You know what I'm saying? But the, the people got to remember who the fuck they is. And they won't be doing this shit. We was beating their motherfucking ass, but we was losing so many people because they was setting whole cities on fire. Right? Now, remember, when they set a city on fire, this is the part they ain't tell you. Anybody get caught leaving the city getting gunned down. So now you either going to stay in the fire or face the gunfire. And then, they wonder, and then they wonder where hell is at. <clears throat> That's a shame. And Aunt Rod, I got two things to tell you. Um, I got to tell you about that dirt bike dream because that happened in real time. Mm -hmm. I got to tell you about that again. And I got to tell you about the dream when I had got off the live with you that night. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, you I, already told me about the dirt bike dream. Tell yeah, me about the, tell me about the other dream, and then we'll chat later on about the uh, dirt bike dream again. All right. So, <clears throat> so I came to a place. I seen a man. He was just steady looking at the land. He had on a brown suit, and he had on a brown hat. His hat matches suit. So. When I um, was walking towards him, he swung his flag around. He said, do not shred my flag. So when his flag reaches on the left shoulder, it turned into an energy weapon. It was glowing red and yellow. <coughs> Orange and yellow, something like that. And it looked like it had lava in it. I think you told me about that dream before. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I think yeah. we went over that one already. Yeah. That's all I got for young bro. All yeah. right. Hey, all but right. peace to the guys, though. You good, money? Yeah, we're peace. Gonna, I'm, we're going to take in another caller. I'm going to take in the sisters, and then we'll try to get another brother up here. For sure, Aunt Rod. All right. All right. There we go. <laughs> peace, hey, hey. peace, peace. How you doing, Uncle Rod? <laughs> I'm doing good, sweetie. How you doing? I'm doing good. <laughs> but you I was guided. From? Um, California. I'm in California. California in the house. Queen Khalifa <laughs> on deck. Let's go. Yes. Um. Well, I mean, I wish I could tell you everything, but. Um, where I'm at right now, I'm basically, I'm in a really good space. I had a lot of transitioning like a lot of us did. It started off last year. Um, I really started um, getting more intuitive. I did Reiki healing. 
Um, I'm starting my own business. I'm in CMOS and I'm a healer and I love it, but I'm also a mother of six and I'm starting to find where I feel a little bit in the middle. Like I love my business and I love being a healer, but I don't want it to take away from my motherhood either. So I'm just trying to like make the right decisions and make sure I'm doing my purpose and what I need to do without taking, you know, away from the other. I guess it's like trying to find my balance. This is a, this is a good question because a lot of people have <clears throat> that concern about balancing motherhood with um, like, what kind of uh, healing practice do you do? Well, I do CMOS. So first I make CMOS gel which has been like uh, really big in my city. So I've like, I've noticed I have a lot of people, a lot of people with health issues, cancer patients, even myself, like I totally, you know, got healthy and everything like that in my family. So that happened. And then I also got into energy healing, the Reiki healing. And so I started doing that. I'm just a little bit touching on it. Um, but just it, in me, I'm just a natural healer. This is the bridge. I'm about to give you the bridge. <laughs> Your mother time can also incorporate your children into making sea moss. Right, and then they do, yeah. Yeah, and then mm. you can, what, one or two or more of them is going to be interested in learning Reiki. Okay. So if you teach them, you're still spending mother time with your children. Exactly. Mother time is also giving them tools and skills that they can go out and do the same that you do heal and to be positively impactful by you incorporating them into your business <clears throat> you kill a couple of birds with one stone you okay. spend mother time with your children you're mm -hmm. teaching them the profession that you're doing because you know that it works right 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 of course yes so now you're able to teach as a mother the things mm -hmm. that they should know. So you incorporate their home education into the business. Right. Okay. Yes, of course. Yes. Okay. So yes. when you when you at work, they at school and you they teacher. Mm hmm Right? And y'all right. all go in there together. So one one mom six month stretch, you might want to teach the oldest the oldest daughter how to do the books. Okay. This yeah. is how we keep track. So that's mm -hmm. her math, that's her business class, right? Right, right. And that's also critical thinking, right? Because mm -hmm, she got right. got to pay attention, mm -hmm. right? Then mm -hmm. she's doing the work, so now she's getting clerical uh, training. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Right, right. And she's also having to work with the computer, so she's learning the computer. So you you incorporating what you what you doing to make a living, mm -hmm. to make it make your whole living. Wow! Right. Don't allow it to be a stressor. Allow it to be a motivator, and the opportunity to teach your children how to be entrepreneurs. Okay. So I want you to get a book. It's called uh, "Developing the Entrepreneurial Mindset." It's a it's like a textbook. Okay, I got it. <laughs> And that's going to give you your guidelines on teaching them about the business from the perspective of an entrepreneur. Okay. So now you're bridging the gap between knowing how to perform the function and then knowing how to turn it into a business. Exactly. Okay. Okay. Right. <laughs> so as a mother, you, you always have an opportunity to incorporate your work especially when you're self-employed with mothering so that that gives you even more time to be mama. Yeah, it does. It does. It does. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your time. Yeah. <laughs> and make sure you stick to your off days. Yes. I, I need to hear that. I Stop do. working on your off days. Okay. Well, your yeah. off days is for y'all to do family activities. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. Right. It is. It is. So, yes. Right. So while your uh, sea moss is simmering or something, <laughs> um, right. pl playing your uh, um, your off days with functions, and you can get to a mother to mothers group to get suggestions from other mothers. 
Oh, okay. And, yeah. and y'all can also use that to form a community bridge for all of the mothers who want their children to have a richer, fuller life. I love that. It, That's amazing. It, yes. I can so, make that happen. Me and another mom, we're both business women and we that's what we deal with is trying to find balance with our kids and also being entrepreneurs. Once so. you get it down pat, keep notes because when you get good at yeah. it, once you've accomplished your goal, now you can train the other mothers on how to incorporate their business as an educational tool to, to homeschool their children. I love it. You know, we're actually going to do tomorrow, me and my friend, we're actually going to go start some nonprofits. And we were trying to figure out what exactly we want to do with well, them. Well, right now just... is not a good time because the IRS is about to blow the fuck up. Oh, damn. What was but the intention? Not gonna have right? to, look, you can still do the nonprofit. You mm -hmm. just don't have to get no tax forms. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Right. Right, right. <clears throat> and and just, you can still do the same work. Okay. But stay out of here. And then when you get the family bank, you use it as the family bank um, um, charitable contribution. Okay, okay, yeah. Yeah, so we know how to restructure mm -hmm. with the tools that we have in front of us, but somebody sometimes has to put the dots together because we're too close to see it. Yeah. Well, we're ready to rebuild, too. Yeah. Yeah, we are. <laughs> yeah. So that's like my job is to get a women back these little tidbits. We appreciate it. It is. It's coming up. back. Yeah. So once y'all start seeing it and then y'all start bringing the corporate, y'all taking the whole community back from these doubles. We are. We ready. I'm ready. I'm ready, Uncle Rod. I am. I'm ready. I'm ready. Yeah. So yes. this is important, too. So this is your guidelines. She said, still do your bylaws and set up your board structure. Okay. This is your guideline because the guideline, when you write it down, it makes it easier to follow it. It is, yes. So the, the even like for your house rules, mm -hmm. could be used as a business bylaws for the children. Right, so yeah. Teach them, so now you're teaching them that if you do have to work for somebody else, you can follow the rules. <laughs> you know, seriously. Right. Yeah. Right? <clears throat> Don't take it personal. Right. That's I always tell them that. Don't take it personal because they don't know you like that. Mm hmm Right? Mm -hmm. So if they don't know you like that, they can't mean anything that's nefarious because they don't know you like that. Yeah. Yeah. I understand. Yeah. <laughs> I, get, I get it. I get it. Uh, so, yeah. yeah. But all uh, of, everything that you can use to your advantage, use to your advantage. Well done. They threw rocks mm -hmm. at us. We build castles. Fuck, fuck. Yeah. Keep throwing the motherfuckers. <laughs> soon, this castle gonna be a whole. You right. You know? right. <clears throat> so we taking uh, everything they use to try to oppress us, and we using the same shit to come up. They didn't ever think that you would have the audacity. To say, anybody know how to balance this mother thing, work thing out <laughs> while I do my own thing? They just, right. Because we used to didn't ask those questions. Right. I just did it. I just, I'm doing it. And yeah. everybody looks around me to my family, friend. How are you doing? I'm just doing it. I push for it and I just make it happen. Yeah. Just make it happen. Right. So, so now, <laughs> now, now you can see the structure. Right. And it'll help you be more effective being the mother that's Miss Seamoss mom. <laughs> that's the first. <laughs> <laughs> that's a good one. <laughs> I like that. Okay. I can do that. Yeah. You're right. I can do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thank you so but, much. Yeah. But make sure you pick you a banker in the family to start teaching how to do the money, how to okay. watch the money and know how to tell good business decisions from bad ones. Oh, okay. Well, then, yeah. <clears throat> so as you're telling them this, they're going to get better at it than you, so expect that. <laughs> but guess what? There's a reason the student can never outshine the master because the greater the student is, the better the master taught him. Yeah, yeah. that's why it's going to be, it's rewarding. It's, it's yeah. going to be, yeah, I'll be very rewarded. I'll be very happy, very proud. And I'm exactly. always here if we, if we have to uh, run into a 
bump or something. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> I appreciate it. Okay. Uh, well, you have a good night. Thank you for taking my call. I really appreciate it. Help me out so much. And much peace and love to all the soul family out there. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> thank you. Everybody, everybody. Peace, peace. peace. to the guys. What's going What's on? What's up, Where's, God? Where you chiming in from? I'm from Philly. I'm from Philly. Philly in the house, God damn it. That's yeah, what I'm talking Philly. about, brotherly love. <laughs> yes, sir. Hey, respect. Hey, yeah, much love, much love, man. I'm happy. I, we finally talked. You know, I had DM'd you a while ago. I had missed your call. You know, so much been going on. But, you know, I, um, so... I got like about three things I want to ask you just to get a more deeper understanding on. So, um, first I want to, I'm going to start with my son cause he's most important. Um, so well, my son's, my son's mother, when, uh, she was five months pregnant, once they found out he was a boy, it was like a light switch cut on all in all. They said that my son was going to be a vegetable said he wasn't going to be able to function, you know, yada, yada. And um, that they um, tried to convince her m multiple times to abort him. You know, I wasn't with it. I told him whatever the universe wanted us to have, we wasn't going to love him or treat him no differently. Fact. I, did, I didn't feel it in my soul. You feel me? I, from day, I just didn't feel it. You know what? You so know, one how of, old is Shorty now? Uh, my son is seven months. So we actually are in court with these with these with these monsters. It's a lot of uh um how can I, a lot of chaos. It's a lot of chaos. Um they she did get an MRI when she was five months, but now they can't produce them MRI images. They can't find them, but the whole time we have them. You mean we have everything. You know what I mean? But all in all, we kinda like being railroaded. What and, is it? What's what's the fight about? Uh, that's the thing. So now they trying to stick with uh, with this this this. So we are. So we went to a specialist when he was two months. So first they said that these things would be visible to the eye when he was born, which they wasn't. We left the hospital. Um, what's supposed to be wrong with him? What did they uh, diagnose? Cere cere so now they trying to diagnose him with cerebral palsy. Okay. But do we have? Uh, like, <clears throat> well, I can't, I can't evaluate him over the phone, but um, right. there's a couple things. At seven months, he's still young enough for you to start using um, supplements that um, stimulate the central nervous system to cause it to catch up and develop it. Cerebral palsy is normally the um, central nervous system doesn't fully develop with the fetus. Right. So it causes them to um, draw the physical form up. Right, right. Right. But so, the good the good thing is you're catching it at this age. Right. Now, this is what I want you to do because I'm not going to, I got I got two herbalists, the one okay. I normally go to here, but the, for, for what you need, you need to call Dr. G from Reawaken Minds. Tell her I sent you. Dr. And G. she have an herbalist that can stimulate the... He can give you supplements to stimulate the central nervous system to break past the, the in, inhibitions created by the palsy. Okay. So you'll start to see improvements in the child if you can get the um, treatment. You fight. It, it would have been better at birth, but seven months old, he's still young enough to affect that, it that's why in I'm the saying positive that, development. That, that, all right, so cerebral palsy, that just came out of... All right, so mind you, that's why I'm saying it's chaos because we are battling... All right, so we battling DHS, and, you know what I mean? Because these we all of these diagnoses came from physicians. No one is so that's like basically we you know we say we trying to get to Washington D.C. It's five of us. We all take our own individual routes, but the end result is D.C. Right. Well, that, I'm telling so you right now, 
right now my my concern ain't with the legal case right, right. fuck them people in their legal case my concern is to um accelerate the central nervous system in your son so that he can he have an opportunity to develop beyond a palsy because the central right. nervous system is still growing and it's right. growing fast right and there's supplements that could give him that will unlock his muscles okay because they normally lock up from the condition okay. so the uh dr g from reawaken minds I have a herbalist he good i talked to him okay. and um yeah so he's he got the means to give you a detailed analysis yeah because that's what we trying to because he's not showing no signs of, of none of these things that they're he that might they're, not have none of it that's right. why i'm sending you to a homeopathic oh. physician that's licensed that right. can tell you if the doctors is because your son might be what you call a chosen one two two twenty two that's when he came that's when he was born two two twenty two yeah, so you go, you need to go to the herbalist, um, and have his his uh birth chart done, okay, astrology, yeah, and um, see when you get that done, see if you can send it to me, I will. because I'm almost positive that they trying to mm -hmm. um get your son from you, mm -hmm. and he's a chosen one, a golden yeah. child. That the specialist. Is he, he said, we we have to get the the MRI and, and and the genetic testing done because we have to see what he is. So you know, I'm paying attention because my spiritual awakening was two years ago. I was shot multiple times, my face, my neck, and my lung. They couldn't tell me I got a bar in my neck. All in all, I had a a a, a, a beautiful outer body experience, and I, it w I had a, a sit down with seven individuals and they told me I didn't come down here for what I've been, was exposing my life to and that they will remove me. Yeah. That, the same thing happened to me when I tried to leave. Mm -hmm. I found, a, I found a um, back door through the astral travel. Cause I'm kind of cunning like that. Mm -hmm. And I was like, I'm done. I'm ghost. Yeah. And I did. Right. And they caught up to me and was like, where do you think you're going? No, you, seriously. You, you 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 made a deal to do some work. You need to no. get your ass back down there and get yeah. busy. There yeah. is no exits for you. I, that's why I I, I like <laughs> now that I'm you know speaking high vibration. You know, it's, it, I'm I'm predominantly the only like the man in my family. You feel me? It's mostly women. So you know, it's like I did a big three sixty. You know, like a complete different individual the old me died i always say that you know the best thing the most high can do is give you a, a new vessel and that's what he did for me and you know i'll I be time like i don't have a choice like so i don't where he was peeing hmm? this ain't the only this ain't the only comment that's concurring with that some of these sisters are psychic <clears throat> and they can see when you said his birthday listening to the scenario and they'll open up the channel and they can see what's going on look before you do anything else get in touch with dr g tell her i sent you to um get to her herbalist information okay. her um he a homeopathic physician they have diagnostic equipment and they your people all right okay the mother people that hijacked our system there's not supposed to be a hospital. Those are supposed to be doula centers. All of the physicians are supposed to be under a doula, a grand doula. A grand doula is the equivalent of a chief doctor in modern medicine. So get your son yeah, I'm, checked. I'm by, go, get your son checked out by your tribal man. physician. That's what you tell him. All right. Now. Right. And... Go ahead. Okay, what else you got? I, I, so I'm, you know, you know, all this, you know, has been smacking me left and right. So, uh, you know, like a bum rush. So my grandmother, she called me. Well, she's she's my my mom's sister's mother. You know, they they all have the same father. So she called me. You know, I was on the phone, and she was she was like, "Boy, do you know who you are?" 
So I'm like, I'm like, ooh. She like, your name is Kasim. You are the, the lion prince. Hebrew. And you know, I'm you know, I she like search your name. So you know, I did my uh, geometry and you know, things like that. And you know, I, I understand that I am a rolling nine and you know, um I'm just trying, you know, my last name is Atwell. So when I looked up, you know, Atwell, you know, it, you know, I came to the uh a saying that saying it's actually pronounced at will. And it's a British, it had a crest, it had a royal a royalty crest. And it was it was a British family, so it kind of like threw me off, even though I know that they stole all of our, you know, our birthrights. My father, he was he was a very, very, he, my father. Transcended when I was two to a, uh, to a motorcycle accident. Um, uh, he was, you would thought he died and respected to this day. So my family trying to seek understanding and more knowledge of who, who I am and you know, my my purpose. I I do know that I am a light worker. You know what I mean. And you know, your, your I, I, purpose I, I was right trying now. to you know talking to the, these. Is, is your, your, for your sure. purpose right now? Yeah. When you get done doing your due diligence on that, everything opens up for you. Yes, sir. All right. So just do what I told you. Get in touch with Dr. No, G and Reawaken Minds. Tell her I sent mm -hmm. you to get her um her um homeopathic physician to look at your okay. son because you don't trust these doctors. And I believe that it's a, it's also along with and remember this for anybody else who have children with the palsy, um the massage therapy at least once a week for the first two years is critical to preventing the locking of the muscles. If it's going to be able to be done, those massages, mm -hmm. learn how to do them yourself because it gives you good binding time with the child. Yeah. But you need a good deep muscle massage at least once a week mm -hmm. to release the tension between the nerve and the muscle. This is why we need our doulas back. So they can drop him out. I'm gonna take you in, uh, sister. This might take us out the door, y'all. Um, yes. See, if if he would have had a doula, the doula could have been the sound bowls. Could, is good for especially in utero. If he had a doula, she'd have started giving the baby therapy to stimulate nerve growth in the um in, when the mother was pregnant, right? But that didn't manifest. That that's not what he had. So now he got to try to do something um post birth, postnatal for the child to try to stimulate him to uh, respond normally as normal as possible. Okay, so the, um, that sister didn't come in. Yeah. Greetings, greetings. Greetings, guys. How you doing? I'm pretty good. I'm just listening to um, all our people speak about the traumas that we're experiencing in these hospitals. And I spoke on this before. Um, and alive with you of how important it is for us to get our babies um, born the right way. And in order for us to do that, we have to get away from these facilities because they are literally causing so much trauma and pain upon us, we don't even understand. But my problem is our people don't even know that it's a problem. So how do we even address that issue? Because they yes. don't even know that it's a problem. Right. So a lot of them not going to know it until 
they start arresting doctors for medical malpractice um, that's been covered up by insurance companies. Mm -hmm. uh, see, that's what, oh, my apologies, go ahead. Yeah, so once they start seeing the level of doctor collusion with insurance companies, and they start seeing the level of con collusion between doctors and pharmaceutical companies that pay doctors advertising fees for giving scripts out for certain medications, whether you need it or not. Yep. So they're giving people medication to treat a kidney disorder they don't have, and the side effect is the prolonged treatment of the kidney, there's nothing wrong with it, makes the kidney become defective. Mm -hmm. And see, this is the thing, like our minds are very powerful. And when we go to them and allow them to infiltrate our, our birth, they can tell us whatever they want to tell us. And people don't understand how um, traumatizing those ultrasounds are to the baby. A lot of the problems that our babies face is, is dealing with those ultrasounds. It destroys the brain tissue. It destroys the organs. We're not even giving our babies a chance when we do that. This is, this is my baby right here. Can y'all see her? Hey, little lady. Okay, so she, she sparked my awakening. She was born August 24th, 2017. Now, when I was pregnant with her, I was 22 weeks pregnant with her, and they told me, oh, uh, I was getting ultrasounds. I didn't know. I was ignorant. I didn't know. So I was getting ultrasounds with her, and all of a sudden, the, the technician walked out. Five, five or six white coats walk in the room, and they're like, and I'm looking at them. None of them look like me. So they're like, well, your baby is showing no bridge in the nose. We're seeing calcium build up in the heart, which is indicators that your your daughter has, your baby has autism. I mean, not autism, um, Down syndrome. The first question they ask me is, do you want to abort? And I'm like, hell no. I'm like, whatever's going on with her, that's, that's my child. I'm going to deal with it. I'm not aborting. So then a week later, they called me and they're like, well, can we do an amniocentesis? A uh, amniocentesis is when they take that long needle and stick it through your womb to extract amniotic fluid. So I felt like, like knowing the information that I know now, I feel like they were trying to, to basically kill my, my baby because they knew what was coming through my port. Yeah, so there's a technique of uh, um, fetal assassination is what it's called. Hmm? They use a long needle and pierce the brain of the fetus. Yep. And when they pull the needle out, you leave. You be all right for a while, um, but the baby is now hemorrhaging in the brain, and you don't know it. And the doctor ain't gonna tell you. Mm -mm. Yep. And so it's like I, I I I extend my my knowledge to to pregnant women. I I work in a hospital, and it's mm -hmm. hard for me to be there. It's hard for me to go to work every day. But so many of our people are there. I feel like I have to be there. And I I messaged you the other day. And I was telling you, like, how overwhelmed I am. I know that I have a job here to do, but I'm overwhelmed. Like, it's a lot. And I really don't know how to balance that out right now. Well, the first thing you have to do is um, be the observer until you know what to do. Mm -hmm. You might be there only to talk to certain people. Mm -hmm. So don't feel no type of way. If people don't feel like they're listening, but listen to your your energy draw you to who you need to talk to. And that's what's been happening. Um, and the people that uh, the universe has been uh, attracting me to, attracting to me, um, they are very receptive. Like I, I told you before, I like I pass out herbs at work. I'm talking to people about like it was one young lady. She um, she had took the shot. She took both the shots. I was on vacation. And maybe a week later, she she had, she yeah. went in the hospital with heart failure, and so they was telling her she needed to have open heart surgery. They gave her like a thousand fucking pills that they wanted her to take. So the people at the job was telling her, "You need to talk to Anya. You need to talk to Anya before you do all of that." Long story short, um, I saw her maybe two weeks after that. Um, I gave her a herb blend that deals specifically with the heart. Two weeks after that, she I saw her in the corridors. And she was like, you know, I went to the doctor and they assessed my heart 
and they asked me like, you know, how's the medicine and stuff working? She told them, I haven't been taking the medicine. I went the natural route, the herbal route. And they told her whatever she'd been doing, keep doing it because her heart was, was looking 100% better. And it's like, if our people just trusted the process, we will be so much better. Like, like, they, like some, some of our people question herbs, but we don't question what these doctors giving us. Like question them motherfuckers like y'all question us. You know what I'm saying? Uh, At least yeah. But see, I tell them to question me for a reason. And I want them to, because if they, if I can get them used to questioning me and they going somewhere where they ain't asking, wasn't asking questions before, it'll become habit. Mm -hmm. It'll become habit. So let them question me. Come yeah. on with the question. I want you to be in the habit of asking the motherfucker, okay, so what is this supposed to be doing? Mm -hmm. yep. How is this supposed to work? Yep. And I break right. it down to them just like yeah. that. Um and 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 then I, I question and then I question them about now I want you to ask your doctor these same questions about what these pills are doing to your body because yeah, they might be giving you something for high blood pressure, but it's fucking up your liver and your kidney. So what are we supposed to do? When you can just take the natural herbs, which we, we have gotten away from trusting, but we trust these niggas. Now so how how can something that they made in a laboratory um, be better for you than what God created if and, they're supposed to do the same thing? Exactly. But, but our people have been so far away. Like, they trust these people. And I'm, I'm, I'm making it my goal to show them why they should not trust them. Mm -hmm. so. Well, it ain't so much of that. Revamping the system. This is mm -hmm. what we're going to... We're going to be systematically revamping the system. They can't stay here murdering motherfuckers on the medical bed. Yep. What the f that we might as well leave the police here. Mm-hmm. Exactly. And and this is the thing, too. Like, we... we Damn, I lost my train of thought. Fuck. But, uh... <laughs> but, <laughs> it's okay. It just escaped me that quick. Oh, no. There it go. So, we... When you was talking about the whole network system, we have to realize whenever you're in a network, these are these people's friends. They're going to send you to their friends so that their friends can make money off of you. So it's not like they're sending you to somebody because they want you to be better. No, they want their friends to make money too. So like that, that's we, we got to get away from all of that shit. And I'm just so ready for this shit to come to a head because I, I can't do it no more. <laughs> well, first of all, first thing we're going to do is People not gonna have to pay for medical for medical care, mm -hmm. and we gonna it's gonna be more of family doctors mm -hmm. that each family gonna have their own physician. Every family gonna have to have their own physician. Somebody in your family better go to school to be a doctor because you gonna have to have a physician in your family, or you better send one of them girls out to marry one because mm -hmm. you gonna have a doctor in the goddamn family. Well, my mom and my sister are both RNs, so we 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 got it legit over here, and mm -hmm. both of them are into um herb, like a natural holistic care. So right. So we, when we go back to the to the family structuring, the like you know how you put elderly in the nursing home now, mm -hmm. we gonna do that. We send them to Big Mama House. Can I tell and you? Auntie just. Aunties that's learning caregiving that live with Big Mama, that that's where they practice it. So I'm glad you mentioned that because it just sparked something to my memory. Look, my grandmother transitioned last year, and two years prior to her transitioning, she was in a um assi assistant living home in Michigan. So I went to me and my family went to to visit her. We're in Chicago. We went to visit her out in Michigan. So this was during the whole COVID time when they wouldn't allow nobody into the facilities. Mm -hmm. And so what had to do was stand outside her window. So as we were standing outside her window, I was guided to pick up the rocks that were below her window. So when I picked up the rocks and I, and I walked and I put them in my car, I got a clear vision of her. And I heard a voice saying that she was going to go into the lion's gate. At that point, she was 86 years old. She transitioned two years later at the age of 88. 88. Lion's Gate. Yeah. Yes. And I told my brother because it was literally like a doubling over moment for me. And my brother like, what the fuck wrong with you? 
I'm like, I just got a message that Granny is going to go into the lion's gate. At the time, I didn't know what the fuck that meant. So I'm like, you know, it, 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 it gets crazy over here. And then, like, maybe a month ago, my mom was having some allergy issues, so I made her blend for her allergies. And I'm like, okay, I was doubting myself. I kid you not. I was sitting right here in my bed where I am right now. My grandmother appeared right in front of me and told me, what is your problem? You better trust yourself. And I'm looking like, what the fuck? And my daughter was sitting on, on the chair right there. She was like, what, mom, what? But I was in a trance, like, listening to my grandmother. And she was like, we, she was like, we got you. We're not going to let you feel. And I'm like, who is we? And her sister, who, who um, transitioned <clears throat> after her, stepped forward. And she said, we got you. Trust yourself. Mm -hmm. So I'm just like, whew. But yeah, it's a, somebody said something about C-sections. I want to speak on C-sections being one of the most powerful things we can do to bring our children into this existence, right? Because it, it again, going back to, to what was spoken earlier about how um, where our, our, our births are being, our, um, our women are being uh, suffering from postpartum. Our babies have to come through our, our, our birth canal. It's good bacteria down there. It's hair down there. Like all of those things help our babies connect. Every time we go against that process of having our babies through a natural birth, we, 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 um, we, we create a disconnect, right? Because our, we're not able to connect with the baby. The baby not able to connect with us. So then, like, I went through postpartum with my with, uh, all of my children because all of my births were stole from me because I didn't know this information. But I used to, like, have dreams about flushing my kids down the toilet. And I, I resonate with what you said when you was like, you know, we might have negative thoughts. But when it come down to it, we'll fuck a motherfucker up over our kids. But I would never hurt them. But it's the point that those thoughts were going through my head and I didn't understand why. And even now today, I still I have like uh, separation anxiety when I'm away from them. And I know that it's because all of their births were stolen from me. You got, you're right on point with that. The C-section thing too. A lot of doctors route for this, uh, root for the C-section because they got a golf game to get to and I can get this baby out in four hours where you're going to be in labor for the next 30, 72 hours. Ain't Never no knowing point. that the, the whole extended labor is the psychological connecting of the mother and the child. With the, the prolonged labor is to embed the oxytocin response into the mother by constantly contracting the uterus. Your baby's been trying to talk to me the whole time. You might as well bring her over here and let her say hi to the people. So, um, say, oh, did you say hi? So, just a little history. I don't, I don't want to put no labels or anything on her, but she's been, uh, uh, she's she's autistic. She's very special, um, and she's really good with numbers. She, go ahead. Can you hear me? I can hear you. Oh, okay. Can you hey, see little her? lady. Yeah, I can see her. She try, she she trying to act like it ain't important now. <laughs> I see you. I thought you was trying uh, to tell me. I thought you was trying to tell me something. Now you don't want to talk. Not, uh, uh, uh. I got you, sis. Somebody <laughs> said never label her. I got you, but I I just wanted to let you all know how special she is. But I didn't know any other way to explain it other than what you know, than using that term, but I know different than that. Um, but yeah, she, she's definitely amazing. And she's right now she's choosing not to use this language, but I'm telling you, she speaks to me through my dream. She speaks to me like, she, she speaks to me like telepathically. She's talking to me now. Is she won't, she won't, she, won't, she, she want me to know what she talking about, how she say it, not how we want her to say it. Ain't that right, sweetie? Ah. See? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, somebody understand me. Yeah, and then like when, when I can, when I, some, like most of the time, I'm gonna just be honest with you. I connect better with her when I'm chiefing 
and when I understand what she's trying to convey to me, you can see the joy. You can see the excitement with her. Like, damn, my mama get me. My mama understand me. It's yes. She, she's one of the defiant ones. She's rebelling against this this slave language. Yep. And and that's what she told me. And you know what my grandmother, when my grandmother transitioned, my grandmother transitioned at home. We brought, because she kept packing her shit. And my mom was like, evidently, she wanted to be at home. So we pulled her from Michigan to Chicago and brought her home and allowed her to transition at my mom's house. When she was transitioning, my mom, my grandmother, um, I took her, in, my grandma, she heard her in the living room talking. My grandma said, who was that in there? I said, that's my baby. She said, go get her. I went in the living room and I got her and I took her back in the room to where my grandmother was. And my grandma said, hey, baby. And she said, she just looked at her and she gave her a little scream. And she was like, she don't talk. I said, no, nah, granny, she's choosing not to use words right now. My grandmother told me, she said, it's not that she don't want to talk. She said, she don't know you. You haven't introduced yourself to her. I said, what? <laughs> she said, so immediately I'm like, I, when I got home, I hugged, I kissed her, and I told her, I'm unique. I'm your mommy. I'm, you know, I just introduced myself to her. And I, I really feel like from that moment on, it created a beautiful bond between us. And I truly feel like my grandmother... He was overriding the um, errors of the birthing process. Mm, yeah, because her birth was telling you that. Her birth was stolen from me because I ended up having a C-section with her as well. They told me I couldn't have her vaginally, so they ended up giving me a C-section with her. And I, I have gotten over the guilt of um, what I put myself through and what I put my children through. I've healed from all of that. Now I'm ready to fucking fight. Now. <laughs> That's the first thing we feel like when we start healing and we be ready to test some shit up. I want to fight. If I'd have known this shit, I'd have kicked me a motherfucking ass 20 years ago about this shit. I'm telling you. But, but yeah. now my mission is to prevent another mother feeling like I felt. You know what I'm saying? That's, that's, that's what this whole doula center development is going to be about um, when we get done reclaiming our shit. Because we're not doing this shit. They wanted me to ask the question. I said, no, we not doing none of that fucking fuckery shit that they've been doing to these women in the hospital. Mm -hmm. I got a video for y'all that's listening to this. It's called, uh, it's on Facebook. And it's called Desecration of the Holy Places, Hysterectomy and Mastectomy. Y'all might want to check that out. It's about three years ago. I am a Virgo. Oh, that's my sis right there. OG, I am a Virgo. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Okay, sweetie, I'm gonna take a. I'm gonna try to get a couple more cars in before this. Can I ask ends. one more question about the baby? Mm -hmm. Sleep. She don't sleep. I don't know what to do. Give her CBD oils. Okay. <laughs> CBD. It allow, it allow her to relax. Oh. Well, she just confirmed it. She said, yep, yep. So, <laughs> all right. Glad to do it. I appreciate you as always. Okay. All right. How do I get out? I've been seeing you, Lorenzo, talking about you need to get in here. You got to come on up and talk that talk. Chief and with the chief for late at night. Yo, greetings, greetings, good blessings, God. What's up? You hear me? Peace, God. Peace, God. Where you chiming What's going on? What's going on? Let me see if I can change, get my camera to... I don't know how to fix my camera, though, how to spin it around. Man, my heart beating. I want to talk to you for so long. It's been a long time. I'm going to leave it like this. Anyhow, it's been a long time. I want to talk to you, right? So I'm calling you from Trinidad. Wait a minute, you got to fix your camera because people need to see you. All right. I know. See how to do it. All right. Yeah. Peace, God. I'm calling you all the way from peace, peace. I'm calling you from Trinidad now. Trinidad. You have a lot of people on <laughs> Trinidad and Tobago. You have a lot of people in Trinidad that love you and they know about you. You wouldn't believe the amount of people that I put on to you. And it was like, yo, I can't believe who was him and this and that. And how he's speaking, what he's saying, he's giving people encouragement. Like two days ago, I let my mother look at you. 
my mother was like, yo, I like him, man. I really like him because he talking about the leadership because she realizing that people is lost and people don't know who to turn to. Like, there's nobody out there that's giving you a hope to see this system destroyed because they, we know it's, it's a lot of fuckery is going on. So I wanted to ask you a few questions, all right? Because now, with me, I realized, like, so I love the brain banging. I love the brain bang, right? But I love the gang banging part too because when I was 12 years old, you sound like me. <laughs> yeah, when I was 12 years old, I started my own. We had my own gang because I grew up in Long Island, and you know, I was like, "Oh, this is it, all right, brotherhood." You know, what I mean, we love for each other. We're sticking together because it's a, it's a crew of us, and it's thousands of them. So we gotta stick together. So now, what I'm thinking, I was like, "Well, the lights supposed to go out soon, hopefully, right? When them lights cut." I'm thinking, is that the time the gangbang gonna start? Because the gangbang gotta go down sometime. Look, look, we did, we, like when the look, gang. Look, 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 look. We gonna get our chance. We got some dirty motherfuckers that's real good men got to do some real horrible shit to about our babies. Yeah, uh, yeah. A lot of people got it. Some people. Listen to what I say. You got some real good men that got to do some real horrible shit to some real <laughs> horrible people about our babies. So don't yeah. worry about that. When the car come out, when the OG step out, when the leadership step out on the land to be seen in front of the public, <clears throat> they going to get an OG calls and get where you need to be because we finna clean this shit up. They know who yeah. all of the dirty players is at every level. Right. So right. we ain't got to worry about that part. That's going to come. But, but right now, right, we, bring, because right I'm now we brain banging. All right. So stick to the brain but banging I'm, until the OGs say we gang banging because they're going to tell us who the real ops is and stop us. And we're going to go. Right, because they've been telling us yeah. the motherfucker in the blue is your op if you wear red. No, they ain't. It's that motherfucker right. hiding behind that other motherfucker throwing a rock at your goddamn ass. That motherfucker is that's the one we want. So right, right. now, right now we brain banging. We trying to get the people to know this shit is yeah. over. Right. OG called and yeah. laid down the motherfucking play on their ass. Look, I'm right. I'm gonna tell you what to look for. On November the tenth, if them inmates don't move. Right. If the inmates don't move, if the people tell they they relatives, they got a spokesperson in the street, one of the chiefs on the land willing to speak on behalf of the inmates, no movement on November the tenth. If they do that shit, and that that's gonna scare the shit out of them. The right. most fearful thing that these motherfuckers is a unified prisoner community. Mm -hmm. It was yeah, cause they know that we all of our men is held captive by the enemy. Yeah, that's what I'm. That's exactly what I'm saying with the banging. Right. People have to go and get people. Got to come out of that jail. I have a cousin in jail right now, and the only way he gonna come out is if he, you know, the banging start or something like that. Something gotta happen because you can't keep these people in this jail for so long. The case ain't get tried yet. It's, it's been 10 years and all type of crazy they have shit. no certificate or jurisdiction from anybody for anybody that's currently incarcerated. They have never produced, because nobody has ever challenged for the certificate or jurisdiction that the executive uh, legislative branch is supposed to give to the executive branch. Because of the break in the chain of jurisdictional command, all of the inmates then fall under my jurisdiction, chief of the land. Right. So now right. I told them motherfuckers, the inmates, when the inmates don't move on, when the OG car go out, the Crips ain't going to move, Bloods ain't going to move, bikers ain't moving, stones ain't moving, vice lords ain't moving. And all of the neutrons, they gonna understand the situation, so they not move. Right. Right. So then, when they go talk to them, because they always want to know who's behind it, who the one told y'all no movement, and they say, "Well, this is an OG call from the street." 
And I'm not talking to nobody but Farrakhan, Malachi York, um, or the three chiefs. Other than that, I, right. I, don't send nobody knocking on my door to discuss and negotiating. When the muff, when I, I tell the motherfuckers to tear this bitch up, how you want that? Coast to coast. Mm -hmm. Right?